My name is Manolis Finorolakis, the founder and producer of Reality Crowd TV, and thank you for joining us today on this special episode where we are talking to keynote speakers at the KickerCon conference in Houston. And one of our guests today is one of the keynotes, John Medved, the founder and CEO of our crowd. Uh, before we get into the interview, I'd like to give everyone just uh, a few ground rules for the event. Uh, there is a new showcase application that is currently available. If you're watching live, you see a whole bunch of new links on the side. Uh, the links are important to note in case you want to contact the guests, uh, also contact the people at KickerCon. We have a, a website for our crowd, we have a website for KickerCon, and we also have a few websites to contact us directly, as well as register for our upcoming shows uh, through our crowd speaking platform. Uh, with that said, uh, I would like to introduce our, uh, our guest today, uh, once again, John Medved. And John, uh, please, uh, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi there. Um, I'm John Medved. I'm the founder and CEO of Our Crowd. We've been around for about a year and a half, and we've emerged as one of the largest, uh, probably the largest, equity crowdfunding platform in the world in terms of money uh, that's already been raised. We've just announced that we uh, have crossed the $16 million threshold for our 48 portfolio companies. And uh, we are for accredited investors only, which means you have to, uh, in the U.S., have a a million dollars of net worth outside of your house or two hundred thousand dollars of annual income but if you got that we are delighted to have you join our platform there are already five thousand investors like that uh, around the world on the platform and uh, it's it's quite quite active that's that's incredible and, and what and what you're doing is uh, is equity crowdfunding as opposed to the donation and rewards based crowdfunding that everyone is so familiar with uh, it, as far as investors in the U.S., because I believe that's our that's our audience, uh, under what regulations are you currently doing that under, so that perhaps you can give a kind of a layman's uh, term of of how this is being done through uh, through equity crowdfunding? Sure. So we're working with what's called Title II uh, crowdfunding, which we uh, we are allowed to publicly solicit as long as we get uh, proper certification from our uh, equity uh, crowdfunding uh, investors to their uh, accredited status. In other words, in the old days, you could actually just say, "Hey, I'm accredited," and you didn't have to bring anything. And it was, you know, up to you to to, to follow the law. Today, we actually need to get, uh, and, and typically it's a letter from an accountant, but we need to uh, make sure that you are accredited. Once you are, then you're able to invest in the the companies that are on our site. The way it works by us is that. Companies can't just go to our site and list themselves. Uh, we fully curate and, and, and select the process. So we have examined about 2,500 companies since we started about a year and a half ago. We've uh, performed 48 campaigns. Each one has uh, resulted in an investment. Um, over 20 of these campaigns have been now amounts of over a million dollars. So I think that we are among all crowdfunding platforms, one of the platforms with the largest number of big deals. We've actually done four different deals where the amounts have been over three million dollars. So this is not, you know, sort of your ten thousand and twenty thousand dollar crowdfunding site. Uh, the minimum investment per deal is ten thousand dollars. Okay, so that if you actually are accredited and you join, you can begin to, you know, choose the companies you'd like to invest in from ten thousand dollars on up we've had people write half a million even million dollar checks uh, before um, and we we like this because it allows people to take a portfolio approach to this kind of investing meaning that if you have a hundred thousand dollars you'd like to deploy in this asset class and and please make sure that it's not all of the money that you have in your you know uh, portfolio which you need to be you know well diversified in other asset classes but even within that hundred thousand dollars, what we advise is not to go pick one great company. We think many of our companies are great, but to take ten companies or more, and to then take little bite sizes. And it's not so little for some people of ten thousand dollars each, and deploy that. Because the reality in startups are that they're very, very risky. And if you don't take a portfolio approach, um, you're, you're, I think, uh, taking undue risk. Absolutely, I, uh, I, that was a perfect um, a perfect explanation of uh, 
of number one, what Title II equity crowdfunding was. It was it's as a result of the 2012 Jobs Act, which is allowing uh, you know the general solicitation of accredited investors. Um, but also the the risk. Just because you're an accredited investor doesn't necessarily mean you're um, you're a genius when it comes to picking investments. So you can't just go in there. Um, without doing your research on these companies too. So you, you, you gave a really good uh, broad description. What, what I'd like to do, if, if I may, would I be able to play your video to kind of give people a, a better understanding of what our crowd is? Sure, please go ahead. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen here for a moment so that uh, people can see exactly what, uh, what, your, um, what your business is here. So I have this up. Um, so I'm gonna hit play and if you can't hear it, just uh, just speak up, but it should work. So here we go. Probably want to make it full screen also. Yeah, there the way you go. that our crowd works is actually rather simple. All you have to do is get yourself an invitation, either directly from us because we already know you or get referred in, or on our contact us part of the website, simply write to us and tell us a little bit about yourself. There's no registration fee. There's no upfront commitment. All you have to do is be an accredited investor meets our basic criteria and then you're in. Once you've been admitted to our crowd, there's no commitment whatsoever. You have no minimum investment amount over a given year. You have no commitment to our fund. There is no fund. It's basically each and every month when we bring deals to your attention, take a look at them. We'll bring you investment opportunities. We'll send you back here to the website. You'll be able to check the companies and look at the companies that we're investing in and decide which ones you'd like to go for. Once you actually want to make an indication for an investment, It'll be very, very simple on how to do this. We're trying to simplify the investment process to make it easy for you, the investor, to pick the best startups. Remember, the minimum investment will be $10,000 per investment. We will sit on the board of these companies, manage your investment until, God willing, these companies reach an exit and we have a return. Generally, our fees will be about one-half to two-thirds those of the traditional venture capital structures which you're familiar with, but we will be taking modest carried interest fees on profits earned from investments as well as management fees to make this all happen. Please feel free to contact me, John Medved, at my email, john at rcrowd.com, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about our crowd, about crowdfunding, about the Israeli startup scene. We look forward to staying in touch with you and building a really better way to fund the next generation of Israel's startups. Wonderful. That, uh, that was clear, concise, and, and straight to the point. I, uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, let me just get the screen back here. Um, so interesting. So uh, are, you, are you specifically focused on Israel-based startups, or can entrepreneurs from other countries also raise capital through your platform? It's interesting. That uh, video was recorded almost a year and a half ago. And luckily, uh, you know, factually, it's correct with that one element of while we still are headquartered here in Israel and we are very focused on the Israeli startup scene, we have most of our companies are Israeli, uh, we've begun now funding companies all over the world and we have about a half a dozen American companies up on the site, we have one from Australia, we have one uh, sort of joint venture, Israel, New Zealand, we're looking at deals all over. And uh, we welcome entrepreneurs from around the world to utilize our site. But I think one of the real, you know, uh, uh, seminal moments for us is we began to, to build this platform. And I got to tell you that a lot of it has been built, um, you know, making it up as we go along. I mean, if you think that we had this sort of, you know, golden plan and we figured this out, you know, uh, a year and a half ago exactly the way it would play out, that's not the way that most startups are done. We've, you know, made our own sort of internal pivots. But one of the things that has really become apparent to us is how important this globalization of innovation finance is. That until now, without crowdfunding, it was just hyper local. If you had the the good fortune of a venture capital fund that you'd like to get money from in your town or angel investors in your town then you're in luck if you can convince them to invest in you. But if you're in you know, places that don't have a lot of venture capital, for example, one of the companies uh, we've invested in is a company called Surgical Theater. They're based in Cleveland, Ohio, which has not been known as the you know, bastion of venture capital by all means. They have this great company and they could not get venture capitalists from other centers to fly out to Cleveland. They just wouldn't come. 
turns out we did. One of our guys is from Cleveland. And of course, we funded them because once you're on the web, it doesn't matter whether you're in Cleveland or in San Diego or in you know Sydney, Australia. It's about bringing these investors from around the world because we have, by the way, our accredited investors are not just Americans or Israelis. They're from 60 different countries. Um, and, and so they can come from anywhere and they can back companies from anywhere. We're trying to, to really democratize the process, not yet fully, right? In other words, we're not doing, you know, Title III crowdfunding. You've got to be accredited. Um, you know, we are still gatekeepers in terms of our curation and selection of the companies. We feel it's very important in the early days of crowdfunding that we get the best possible deals up there. So while we're not, you know, savants or, or uh, uh, you know, profits, okay, with a PH, um, we do want to see profits with an F. And the best way to do that and to guarantee, you know, there's no guarantee in this business, but to, you know, get the best performance is to curate the companies that are coming to the site. So we're running all the companies that come to us through a, a, a fairly intense venture capital screen. We do due diligence. We call customers. We do background checks. We do all kinds of things on these companies to figure out who the people are, what their chances of success are, and then we make a determination if we're going to negotiate a term sheet and sign term sheets, just like you know normal venture capital funds, and then we put it available to the crowd. So there's a real degree of, I would call it a hybrid model, where we're trying to preserve the professionalism and the discipline of venture capital together with the freedom and the uh, uh, spontaneity, if you will, of being an angel investor, making your own decisions. You're not putting your money to work in a uh, you know blind pool. You are the ultimate you know decider on which of these companies you'd like. But because we have such a large corpus of companies up on the site, already 48 deals, you get to decide from that 48 which ones you would like to build your own portfolio from. Now, one key element to remind uh, your listeners or viewers is that we take each and every investor and then we aggregate them into a special purpose vehicle. We actually don't provide shares in the company in which you invest. You get a, a partnership interest in a limited partnership, which we manage as a general partner. We actually take board seats. We write a single check for the company. And we find that this has benefits both for the investors and for the company. On the company side, instead of having to chase you know, 50 or 100 individual investors all over the world, every time you need signatures, it's a nightmare. Okay, not to mention what's going to be like someday when there are thousands you know, of investors in some of the crowdfunded companies. We wanted to avoid that hassle for the company. So the company has one address, one check, one board member. But what it gives the investors is essentially a responsible party there watching the company, providing assistance, guidance, sitting on the company's board, reporting regularly, but most importantly, giving rights to these angels that they've never had before. Because typically the rights in a company, and I'm talking about anti-dilution rights or preemptive rights, drag-along and tag-alongs, and all kinds of other things that are imposed typically on companies by venture capital investors, they were never in the most part available to the angel investor. Because the angel investor uh, wouldn't hold the ownership threshold. Usually in these uh, rights sections of the share purchase agreement or the investor rights agreement, they're limited, uh, these rights, to people who own 2%, 3%, 5% of a company. And somebody who's writing a $25,000 or $50,000 check is typically not getting that percentage of the company. And therefore, what we're now offering is because we write a million dollar plus check, we are getting treated just like a venture fund. So giving essentially to someone the ability to uh, create the both um, small investment size of $10,000, choose their own investment, but then get protected and managed like you would be if you were an investor in a venture capital fund. Absolutely, I, I I think it's I think it's a great model. I mean, the the curation to ensure that investors are protected, you know, by by curation that means you you go through a due diligence process on these startup companies to make sure that they're viable in the first place. I, I think that's beautiful. And one one thing that I also know that a lot of people get confused with, 
under the under the Jobs Act, the fact that you're able to only collect uh, investment uh, dollars from accredited investors, and and those individuals currently are those who make two hundred thousand a year or are worth a million in net worth, excluding their personal residence. A lot of people get confused to say, oh, so that means Title II equity crowdfunding isn't for me because I'm not an accredited investor. What most people don't realize is as the startup, as the entrepreneur who is bringing a business to your platform, you don't have to be accredited. You can only get funded by accredited investors, but as the startup, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a great idea, they can go and submit their project to your platform today, and they're perfectly allowed to do that. Is that, is that correct, John? That's correct. I mean, in other words, the entrepreneurs don't have to be accredited investors. I mean, yes. they're, they're, many of them are starting these companies so they can become accredited investors and, 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 and invest in other guys. Um, look, the, it, it turns out that in America there are probably about 10 million households who meet that accreditation criteria. So we're not just talking about, you know, someone referred to us as Kickstarter for millionaires once as sort of a joke. Um, but the reality is there seem to be, at least in America, a lot of millionaires. Okay, There are a lot of people who meet this criteria. And what's interesting about this target audience that we're going after is that, by and large, the estimates are somewhere between 95 and 98 percent of these households have never invested in a startup. So we're dealing with pretty much a virgin audience who've read the stories about WhatsApp or have seen the movie uh, the social network, you know, or the story of Steve Jobs, and they, you know, are watching Silicon Valley on, you know, cable or, uh, you know, uh, Apple TV, and they're saying, but wait a minute, you know, okay, I get the point that I can, you know, buy public stocks, um, I can buy, you know, into, you know, Twitter or Facebook once they're they're public, but you know, how come I'm not part of this process where I can get in, you know, early stage into the next, you know, home run? And now you, you know, again, no guarantees. It's all very risky business. But we're now democratizing this, at least for that important group. And I think that that's the first important sort of step in crowdfunding. First of all, it's the only legal way to do it today anyway, because we're all waiting for the SEC, you know, to figure out exactly how the uh, Title III is going to play out. Um, but I also think that there's a certain logic here, because this is a group who, you know, have the means, who can take the risk, who are a little more sophisticated, and let's start here. Okay, let's create you know hundreds of millions and billions of dollars of new innovation finance from this group. Let's create some more wealth for this group. Let's allow platforms to figure out you know the important aspects of crowdfunding. So one of the things that we found, for example, in this process, is that there's a misnomer, almost a, a misnomer in the the name of the process. We call it crowdfunding. It's not just about the funding. What people mistakenly believe in terms of startup creation is that it's just about the money, right? Hand the guy the money, give him the check, and leave him alone. It doesn't work that way. It turns out that to be really smart money, you got to go to work with the company. You got to sit on their board. You got to help them. You got to make introductions, okay, to the uh, next reseller or to their strategic partner, You've got to help them hire key people. You've got to give them contacts with the press, give them a great speaking gig. All of this is really the role of a of a smart investor. But what turns out to be wonderful about crowdfunding is that you can do more than just funding. You can actually engage in crowd building because the people who are part of our network, you know, who are among those 10 million accredited households in the U.S. and are coming from 60 countries. They come with a whole bunch of contacts because they have actually chosen which investment they want to be engaged with. They have a, a, almost a, a, a will to help. And so we're seeing literally a wave of positive introductions both to future funders, to hires, to partnerships, to distributors. And we are, I think, able to provide not just what a standard venture fund can provide its you know, uh, portfolio companies, but something much, much more. And I think that ultimately what crowdfunding platforms are going to be distinguished by is not just their good sense if they're curating deals, which deals they're putting up, or how easy they are, or how the, the UI looks, but ultimately what kind of support and productive help they can provide their portfolio companies. 100%. That, that's 100% correct. I think what most companies lack 
They have the brilliance in, in the technology side. They have brilliance in ideas. But what you're saying to me is the, the support of what business development the platforms can provide, that's the real value add because many people are just not good at that. Um, so I, I see that as a huge advantage to the R Crowd platform. Uh, with, with that said, John, um, I want to just uh, let everyone know we have a link to the R Crowd platform on the Showcase app. If you'd like to see more information, if you are an accredited investor and would like to register, please go right ahead. We actually are going to now move to talking about KickerCon for a moment. Um, and John, uh, KickerCon is a conference in Houston, and you are going to be there live as well, actually um, presenting at KickerCon. Is that correct? That's what we hope. I mean, right, right now we're living in some interesting times in Israel, and my, my schedule is a little bit fluid, but on my plans are to, you know, God willing, be there. Yeah, no, I, uh, and, and I truly, you know, we feel for what's going on in the region. I, I can only imagine what's going on there right now. But, um, but how, did you, uh, how did you hear about KickerCon? And, um, and I guess tell us about what, what, uh, what made you excited to participate. Well, look, we, you know, uh, I think we're out there. We're not as well known as I'd like to be. Um, I think that we're one of these cases where actually we're doing more and getting less PR and buzz than I would I would like to see. I think that's probably better that way. I'd rather be doing more with less buzz than doing less with more buzz. Uh, you know, at least you know for now in my. Uh, so we were approached by KickerCon, and um, you know we we love to come and meet you know crowdfunding um, uh, investors and to meet uh, people with great ideas and it. You know, I think Houston is a vibrant, um, uh, you know, technology hub today. You know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, I, I think uh, uh, excitement in the local economy there. And I'm a big fan of Texas in, in, in many ways, you know, whether it's music or, or food or uh, just the warmth of the people. So, you know, it was a no-brainer. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, I mean, Justin, uh, Justin Ryan and, and Terrell are just – Great, uh, great organizers. Um, it's going to be an amazing event. Uh, to give us a little bit of a teaser of what uh, of what you might be speaking about, um, I'd like to ask you a question, and I'd like you to kind of give us your your response uh, from the perspective of where crowdfunding will be five to ten years from now. What is your vision of the future of this industry? Um, you know, five years out, ten years out. Uh, and maybe even tell us a little bit of the risks involved as well. But in general, what is what do you see crowdfunding in five to ten years becoming? Well, crowdfunding in general has already arrived. You know, any industry which is a ten billion dollar industry, it's hard to talk about it as nascent, even though it's pretty you know recent of origin. The fact that there'll be ten billion dollars in the broad sense deployed this year on crowdfunding. More than half of that, by the way, in the peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, you know, loan finance uh, area, companies like Lending Club or Prosper are just really, you know, on fire. Um, clearly, the reward-based crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo are doing very, very well. Have become absolutely essential for, especially gadget companies, people who want to, you know, get their little hardware device or their next game or indie movie out. These have become you know, really unbelievable channels, not just to raise money, but in particular to get market validation and to get market attention. Seems like the best way to get the press to take notice of you is to have a successful Kickstarter campaign. And um, I think that's exciting. And of course, then there's our brand, which is sort of the baby brother, but I think someday will be the big daddy. Um, and that's the uh, equity crowdfunding, uh, you know, segment, which is really growing very, very fast. And again, there's been confusion there because there's the difference between the accredited platforms and the curated platforms versus the non-curated platforms and the sort of bulletin boards. There's a lot of activity going on in real estate at the moment with, uh, I think, some dynamic companies going after the real estate crowdfunding business. And of course, when the SEC releases regulations for crowdfunding under Title III, I think you'll see just another burst of excitement. Um, I think that we've been well served in the equity crowdfunding um, sec segment by what happened with the Oculus acquisition by Facebook. You know, your viewers might be aware of the fact that uh, Oculus were the makers of the Rift, which is this incredible set of uh, virtual reality headset, got started with a $2.4 million Kickstarter campaign. And then literally about two years later sold the company 
for two billion dollars to Facebook. What was interesting from my perspective was that a lot of people sort of picked up their ears when they heard this uh, news and said, well, wait a minute, what did the investors get? And the reality is they got a really cool t-shirt. They got the, the bragging rights of having been a early backer of what became a multi-billion dollar company, but they got no part of the ultimate success and wealth that resulted to the founders uh, in, uh, in the Oculus story. So I think that has really focused a lot of attention on equity crowdfunding, where you can get the, we don't give out t-shirts, so you may, we may, may be someday, but not, not now. Um, but what we do give you is a possibility to t take part in the ultimate success of that company. You will, if a company, you know, comes on our site early stage and gets sold for $2 billion, you're going to, you know, God willing, you should make some real money as a result of that if you're investing, you know, amounts from $10,000 on up. Um, and I think there's been a lot of attention paid to this. If you ask me where this is all going five to ten years from now, I think that equity crowdfunding will be established as the fourth pillar of innovation finance. If today uh, startup companies are funded either with angel capital, with venture capital, with corporate capital, they will also be funded with equity crowdfunding capital. And it's hard to say whether five or ten years from now will be bigger than the others. I don't think so quite at that point. Maybe 20 years from now we could be. But we're clearly growing at such a rapid rate that this is going to be a recognized, accepted, and desirable means of providing innovation finance for, for startups. I think that you will continue to see just huge growth in the peer-to-peer -peer lending area, both for individuals and now for businesses. That shows no signs of abatement and just getting bigger and bigger. And I think that reward-based crowdfunding is going to continue to be very, very uh, important and you're going to see that really it's hard to justify why you have a cool gadget company that didn't do that. In other words, we had actually a, a very interesting case of a company on our platform called Consumer Physics who make a product called SCIO, S-C-I-O, which uh, if you go to Kickstarter you can see this really cool video. I don't know if you want to actually show it now. If you could bring up Kickstarter and look at a video called SIO, just do a, a Google search for that. Um, sure. It's a really cool two-minute Kickstarter video which you can share with the listeners. As you're doing this, I'll explain what happened is that this company... And actually, I'm sorry, uh, how do you spell SIO? S-C-I-O. Just type in S-C-I-O and Kickstarter. Got it. And you can bring that up. You'll bring up the Kickstarter page. Sure. Let me, uh, let me get that real quick. I'll uh, share my screen here, and we'll look at the SIO. This, this looks interesting. I, I see by the numbers it was a lot of demand. Um, yeah. it, it's been pretty. You can see it's you know over 2.7, almost 2.8 million dollars, 13,000 some odd backers. If you click play on that video, sure. I'm just going to put this on silent, this notification, so it doesn't bother us. And then uh, yeah, I'll click play, and we'll take a look at this. The technology at our fingertips can help us do amazing things. It can help us navigate the world, know which restaurant to book tonight, or know what song is playing on the radio. But when it comes to the actual stuff around us, if you're not sure or just don't know, well, you're on your own. I'm Damien. And I'm Gore. I'm excited to introduce Sire. Sire is the first molecular sensor that fits in the palm of your hand. It scans the molecular fingerprint of an object and provides relevant instant information about its chemical makeup. You can use it to log the chemical fingerprint, record it, and share it with your friends. Imagine if there was a way to know which watermelon is sweeter. When is that avocado going to arrive? How many calories, carbs, or proteins are in that shape? How your friends are doing? Imagine if there was a way to know the chemical makeup of everything you come in contact with. The applications are endless. I think that's good enough. You can probably stop the video now. Sure. I'll uh, pull that up. Um, but what's interesting about this company is that we provided crowdfunding for it in its very early days when they were developing this unbelievable product. Uh, we were followed in the investment by a, a very well-known uh, venture fund called Kosla Ventures 
from Vinod Kosla of Kleiner Perkins fame. And together, you know, with our original crowdfunding and, and Vinod Kosla, we provided this company with the money to develop the project. And they spent a year in very, very deep stealth mode. And then they came out and the product is, you know, pretty much ready to go. They were able to demonstrate it. It was working. It's this molecular sensor, which essentially is the enabler for the Internet of Things. It's like Googling for matter. Okay, in other words, you basically take this and all matter now becomes, you know, a, a, a potential uh, search, you know, and, and uh, you know, key uh, input information. It's, it's quite a remarkable company. So when they got ready to release the product, it was natural for them as a consumer product to go to Kickstarter and to see if, you know, the consumers have demand for it. And so they went to Kickstarter, they launched that Kickstarter campaign, and, you know, the results are pretty obvious. It's in the top ten you know, of all-time Kickstarter technology uh, campaigns. They actually raised more money than Oculus Rift. Let's hope their outcome is even bigger. Um, but what was really interesting is that in the same time, simultaneously, to them doing this Kickstarter campaign, we launched an equity crowdfunding campaign so that the individual could go to Kickstarter, essentially pre-order this little device for a couple hundred dollars, and then go, if he was accredited, to our crowd and invest 10000 or more in the company. And we raised over $3 million in that crowdfunding for equity, you know, second round for, for SIO, so that you have this sort of working in tandem. And I think it's the first time in history that any company did a simultaneous Kickstarter reward-based crowdfunding, pre-selling the product or backing it and getting a t-shirt and whatnot, as well as the option for equity crowdfunding together raising almost six million dollars. So I, I think you'll see more of that. We had a really good experience with it. We're recommending that you know to uh, uh, consumer-oriented companies who we're looking at in, in terms of a you know a cool way, but it, it just it, it gets you the community larger. You get all these people who are anticipating your product, get lots of press attention. And I think that you will see five or ten years from now um, crowdfunding not just growing in terms of its ultimate size. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how long crowdfunding can grow at 100 percent, you know, annual amounts of money. It's pretty impressive that if we grow again by 100 percent as an industry, that means we'll be talking about a 20 billion dollar industry you know, in 015, uh, uh, I, by the way, we're, believe it or not, short of uh, proper market surveys. The, the most recent market projections are about a year and a half old. They seem to be coming true, but, uh, you know, we're running out of runway on them. And Some smart guys have got to sit down and study this and project where we're going. But I think that it's, it's clearly up and to the right. It's going to become mainstream, and you're going to see better and better companies doing it. What, one of the things that we were... Uh, afraid of and that some of our investors asked tough questions that look aren't you gonna get sort of grade B or grade C companies aren't the grade A companies gonna you know simply continue to access the top angel or the top venture money that they've always done and you'll be stuck with the leftovers and it hasn't worked out that way the companies that we're getting are really first-rate from first-rate entrepreneurs who like this notion of going to the crowd who like the crowd building who like the ease, believe it or not, of our process. It turns out that we're able to work as quickly and sometimes quicker than venture capital funds. But what's really cool is that the deals that we're doing are almost always in conjunction with venture funds. So the deals that we're crowdfunding, whether it's Sayo working together with Vinod Kosla and his crew, or it's other companies we've done in conjunction with, by the way, we've done three deals now with Vinod Kosla and his crew. Okay, we've done deals with Excel and we've done deals with General Catalyst and Canaan Partners and uh, uh, Li Keqing's uh, Horizon Ventures, companies like 3M and Microsoft. So now you as an individual investor can essentially select just a deal that had, you know, investors like Peter Thiel and uh, Eric Schmidt as part of the deal. So you can decide that you'd like to invest alongside these kind of brand named angels or big corporations or you know well-known venture funds and you can get into the deal at the same terms with the same kind of protections starting at ten thousand dollars and I think that's fairly cool 
Yeah, it it is one hundred percent, and um, and and you made a great point. I I believe that the donation and rewards based model will always be around, and and it'll be there for certain projects that don't really qualify for equity. At, at the same time, not every project, um. Is is going to be you know not every project, especially if you're a consumer product, like you said, you you did a simultaneous raise, so you you proved the concept through the Kickstarter model, and that helped you accelerate the investors because now they saw that you were you know it was raising over two million. Why wouldn't they want to invest in this company that has just proven the consumer demand? So there Absolutely. is. A, yeah, absolutely. That's I mean, that was, that was clearly at work. So we had people yes. going back and forth. You know, wow, it's doing really great on Kickstarter. That makes it a better investment. Let me go do that. That's absolutely right. Yeah, and and so this is and this is why uh, these these structures are are made to work together. And, and I think it's important that one doesn't necessarily take over the other because they're both important for the ecosystem at large, in, in my opinion. But what's even better. Is and I know this. Um, we don't have much time to discuss this, but eventually, unaccredited investors will be able to invest as well. So what you know, what what a lot of people don't realize is the 2012 Jobs Act didn't just allow crowdfunding for accredited investors. They actually had two provisions that are allowing for unaccredited investors, meaning anyone, regardless of income, will be able to invest in private companies. Uh, these specific articles were Title Three. In Title IV, uh, those are not yet final. The only thing that's been finalized from the 2012 Jobs Act is the Title II equity crowdfunding, and that's that's going on alive and well. But very shortly, the Securities and Exchange Commission will be releasing the finalized rules on Title III equity and Title IV. Uh, will our crowd participate in either of those unaccredited investor crowdfunding? Hard to say. Okay, I'll be you know perfectly honest. Um, we are very busy now with Title II and accredited investor crowdfunding. It seems to be working really well for us. We need to see and study what the SEC is going to come out with because, uh, you know, the last uh, version was over 500 page document, which, you know, was not a, uh, a political thriller or pot boiler. It was very difficult to work your way through it. And I think there were over a hundred different questions the SEC was asking. So. And I know that uh, uh, McHenry has, has, has already uh, suggested a whole bunch of amendments to the Crowdfunding Act that include things such as increasing the amount of money. I mean, you know, if you're limited under this Title III to only a million dollars in 12 months, so I have 20 companies who are out of luck who are already over a million dollars. I have, um, you know, a bunch of companies who are doing follow-on rounds. One of the great things about our platform is it's not just a one-round uh, episode. As the company is doing better and needs more money and an outside investor is joining or not, we're raising more money on our platform, also driving the numbers beyond a million dollars. So there's a whole element of restrictions and additional sort of regulation that we need to study and understand. We're quite happy in the accredited space. We think there's a lot of capital to access and a lot of work to do and we might at least initially leave it to others to go you know plow the road the way that we have in the accredited investor space in that you know uh, uh, non-accredited investor title three and and reserve the right to you know get into that fray you know a little later but in the meantime you know I'm busy uh, you know trying me and my team of almost 50 people that's five zero people working for our crowd worldwide we are trying to make sure that we you know, continue to find the very, very best companies that we can bring to our platform. We're trying to expand our investor base. We're now at about 5,000 accredited investors worldwide. We'd love to have 50,000. And um, you know, this, these are you know, real goals for us. There are all kinds of new projects we're working on, which we'll be announcing later. And we got our hands full. And I think that the uh, Non-accredited crowdfunding under Title III is going to be a huge land rush and a very, very big part of uh, you know the innovation financing scene. Can't wait to see what what you know the SEC comes up with. But in the meantime, we're building our business. Wonderful, and um, we actually do have one question uh, by Diana y Yazidian, and I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Diana. My apologies. Uh, so the question is for you, John. Um, 
John, I heard you say that your team sits on the Crowdfunders Advisory Board. Your platform has a strong hand on the Crowdfunders campaign. Is your role regulated at any level? Do you have brokers on your team? Thank you. No, so um, today we are operating what is called a venture capital exemption. So we operate the same way a venture capital fund would because remember we're not offering securities from the companies themselves. We are raising venture capital partnerships that happen to be single company partnerships. We are taking you know, board seats on the companies to represent our investors and our, and our funds work with the companies. But we are not at the moment um, you know, following uh, Title III regulations or in any event are we a broker deal or we're not. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, so very good. So I, uh, again, I want to uh, thank you, John, for, for joining us. Uh, before we sign off, again, I'm flashing the link here. Uh, if any of you would like, if, you, if you're an entrepreneur who has a great idea, highly recommend you sign on to the R Crowd link. You could sign up as, a, as an entrepreneur or an investor. Uh, also looking at KickerCon, KickerCon is from October 28th, uh, sorry, uh, August 28th to August 30th. There's a registration link for you to attend the actual event on this Hangout. Additionally, if you have any questions on the show, you could always contact Reality Crowd TV. There's a link there. And finally, we have four crowd speaking campaigns of our additional shows also on the links. We're also we're actually having the organizers of KickerCon on on uh, Thursday. We have a office hour show on August 2nd, which will help people learn how to crowdfund. We have another show, which is a pitch competition on August 7th. And actually, John, you may you may have some startups that might want to participate uh, in that on August seventh. And uh, additionally, we have uh, tomorrow we have a great campaign on Indiegogo. Uh, they only asked for about fifty thousand, and they're well over two hundred fifty thousand raised. So tomorrow we're having the live campaigners on our show tomorrow as well. Uh, so, John, I just want to thank you so much. I know you're in Israel. You could probably be doing a million other things right now, but but you did come on to help promote the KickerCon conference, and we just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and we wish you, uh, your company, and Israel and the whole region the best. Thank you very much for that. It was a pleasure. Okay. Great. So, uh, again, viewers, I really appreciate you watching. Without you, we, we can't do what we do every day. So until next time, dream it, believe it, achieve it. Thank you. Amen to that.